Though the United Kingdom Royal Navy may never again be the most powerful maritime force in the world, it will soon receive a hefty boost in spending. The British Defence Ministry announced an update to the Defence Equipment Plan for 2021 to 2031 that included a significant increase in naval spending. A £4 billion injection into United Kingdom regional shipbuilding will create tens of thousands of jobs and deliver more than 150 new naval and civil vessels over the next 30 years, the government has said. The Ministry of Defence is set to publish its refreshed national shipbuilding strategy. The investment, to be announced by the Prime Minister during a visit to a Merseyside dockyard, will galvanise shipyards and suppliers across the country. The £4 billion fund for the new vessels was announced in the 2020 spending review and the 2021 autumn budget. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Defence is set to publish its refreshed national shipbuilding strategy. This will outline how the government plans to support shipyards across the nation to upskill workers, create jobs, drive technology development, and ensure the industry delivers on next generation challenges. It said the strategy will also build upon the nation's increased support for European defence capability in the face of rising Russian aggression, with British defence giant Babcock chosen as Poland's preferred partner to deliver three new warships based on the United Kingdom Type 31 design. Mr Boris Johnson said, Shipbuilding had been in our blood for centuries, and it should remain at the heart of British industry of generations to come. The national shipbuilding strategy will transform this important and crucial industry, creating jobs, driving technology development and upskilling the shipbuilders of tomorrow, ensuring we are levelling up across every dock, port and shipyard in the United Kingdom, he said. This will ensure the United Kingdom is rightly seen as a shipbuilding power across the world. As part of the strategy, the Department for Transport will invest £206 million in the United Kingdom Shipping Office for reducing emissions. This will be used to match fund research and development in zero-emission vessels and infrastructure and ensure our place is global leader in green technology. Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said, as shipbuildings are, I am proud to be announcing our new strategy, this is an exciting time to be involved in the sector. With significant government investment, we will be levelling up across our shipbuilding, workforce, from shipyard to supplier, from procurement to designer, creating tens of thousands of new employment opportunities, boosting living standards and pay. Our refreshed strategy will see the sector galvanised at a crucial time for our economy and see a vital part of British industry expand and flourish. But Chris Evans, Labour's Shadow Defence Procurement Minister, said, Ministers are failing to ensure ships are built in the United Kingdom and to secure local jobs. One in five ships have disappeared from our surface fleet since 2010 and, while a 30-year pipeline for industry is welcome, this strategy does not address the Ministry of Defence deep-seated issues which mean none of its major shipbuilding programmes are on time or on budget, he said. With growing threats and Russian aggression, our steel industry and shipyards are essential to national security. Labour is committed to a British-built-by-default approach to defence procurement which would build resilience in our supply chains and protect our security. Sarah Kenny, chairwoman of Maritime United Kingdom, welcomed the refreshed strategy, saying shipbuilding communities can now power the future prosperity of our island nation as green engines for economic growth. Whether it's levelling up, by creating skilled jobs across our coastal communities, delivering net zero, by steering our ships in a green direction and exporting these technologies across the world, or promoting global Britain, with 95% of all our trade moved by sea, maritime is central to our country's future success, she said. Our industry supports the national shipbuilding strategy, with its investment, broader focus on commercial and leisure vessels, and emphasis on enablers such as skills and collaboration. We will be working closely with government to ensure these ambitions are met, on our way to becoming the world's most competitive maritime nation by 2050. The United Kingdom shipbuilding industry currently supports 42,600 jobs across the United Kingdom 
from Cornwall to Belfast and Govan, and contributes more than £2.8 billion to the economy. As part of the update to the plan, Britain will spend £38.1 billion in the equipment plan over the next 10 years, compared to £30.6 billion at the end of the previous planning period. That will include an investment for a new lightweight torpedo for use with Royal Navy ships and aircraft and eventually replace the current Stingray weapon. The Royal Navy will also seek to replace the Harpoon missile system, which is scheduled to be removed from service in 2023. Meanwhile, additional investment for the Merlin helicopters will enable it to remain in service until 2040. The update to the Defence Equipment Plan also calls for the development of world-leading autonomous mine-hunting capability to replace legacy platforms. Most notable in the plan were the calls to increase both the capability and size of the Royal Navy surface fleet while supporting the development of three fleet solid support ships, a multi-role ocean surveillance capability, multi-role support ships and Type 31 and Type 32 frigates. Moreover, the plan called for extending the life of three of the Royal Navy's most recently refitted ships. In addition to the surface fleet, the plan called for the launching the United Kingdom-designed cutting-edge Type 26 anti-submarine warfare frigates alongside Canada and Australia. For the future weapons and flagship, the Ministry of Defence will also support investment in missile and sensor upgrades for the Type 45C Viper system, as well as directed energy weapons. Over the 10 years from 2021-2022, we plan to spend £238 billion on equipment procurement and support, an increase of £48 billion from last year's report. Mm -hmm.